Hi, welcome to another video in my series on summing series where we use sigma notation. Now so far in this series we've looked at summing linear types, sum of just simply r. Now we're moving on to summing r squared type terms. And it can be shown that if you were to sum r squared, r going from 1 to n, then it turns out to be equal to n over 6 multiplied by 2n plus 1 multiplied by n plus 1. And the proof of this is normally done by induction. And if you're not sure about induction, want to see a proof of this, then just go on my website and look under proof by induction. But if we assume this result is true, I've got three questions here based around using this formula. And I would strongly encourage you to look at these because these are quite representative of the type of things you can be asked based on this formula. Now, for the first one, we've got to sum r squared, r going from 1 to 10. And if we're doing this, it's a simple application of this formula because this series is really representing 1 squared when r is 1, then r is 2, so you get plus 2 squared, and then when r is 3, plus 3 squared, plus, and so on, all the way up to the last term, the nth term, which is going to be 10. So that would be plus 10 squared. So we've got 10 terms here, n is 10, and using this formula, okay, it turns out to be then n over 6, so that's going to be 10 over 6, multiplied by 2n plus 1, so that's going to be 2 times 10 plus 1, and then we multiply that by n plus 1, so that's going to be multiplied by m, which is 10 plus 1. And if you work this out, say on your calculator, you'll find you get 385. And you can check that it works because you could type this into your calculator. I know it's going to take a little while, not too long, but you should find that you get 385. But obviously this is very useful when n is a large number that it's inefficient to just type the sum into your calculator. Okay, so you should be able to see that it works. Now for question two, let's just come down here, okay, for question two, what I've got is a combination now of terms where we've got one term in R squared and then we've got this constant on the end. Now in earlier videos I showed you how we could work with combinations like this. What we do is we see this as 6 times the sum of r squared, r going from 1 to n, and then for the second term we've got plus and then the sum of the constant 5, again r going from 1 to n. And then we can pick up on this first one, it's going to be 6 times the sum of r squared, r going from 1 to n, and we can see that it's this result. So it's going to be 6 multiplied by n over 6, and then 2n plus 1, and then n plus 1. Okay, so that's the sum of the first term here. Now for this second term, we saw that in the past, that if we sum a constant, n times, then it's going to be n times that constant. So in other words, n times 5 or 5n. Now we can clean this up because clearly these two 6s now cancel one another out. And then we've got that this equals n multiplied by 2n plus 1 times n plus 1. And we can expand that bracket out, or those two brackets, and that's going to be 2n squared, and then you've got 2n plus another n, that's 3n, and then 1 times 1, so that's plus 1. And then you've got the last term, 5n. And if we expand this out again, we've got 2n cubed plus 3n squared, and then plus n, and then plus that further 5n 
is going to be plus 6n. And if you want, we could say factorize this. And if we factorize it, we just pull out n as a common factor. And we've got 2n squared plus 3n plus 6. Now it's often a good idea just to check out your answer at the end. Very simple to do. Just take a low value for n, say n equals 3. Write down what the first three terms would be. You could add them up on a calculator and then just substitute your value for n, say n equals 3, into your formula. Check that it works. Okay, You get the same answer in both cases. Well, I'll leave it up to you just to check that out, but you should find that that works. Okay, well, that's number two, so uh, let's just move on to question three. I picked question three as an example just to show you how we can reverse the effect of using the formula. We start this time with the written series and then we need to convert this to this kind of form. And I'll show you how it's done. What we see here is that each term's got 2 in, so 2 we could regard then as a common factor. So this is going to be equal to 2 multiplied by the sum of r squared. r squared though going from 8 to 15. So we start with r equaling 8 to 15. Now you notice that this doesn't start from 1 as it should do if we're to use this formula. And we can get around this problem as I've explained in earlier tutorials using sigma notation where we've had r not equaling 1. What we do is we do 2 times the sum of r squared going from r equals 1 to 15. So we're looking at summing 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared etc. all the way up to 15 squared. But obviously I haven't got the terms 1 squared, 2 squared etc. all the way up to 7 squared. I haven't got those in this series up here. So what I need to do is subtract the series of r squared but r going from 1 up to 7. Okay, one less than what we've got here. So we've got that. Now all I need to do is just use the appropriate formula. So we've got for the first one here 2 multiplied by and then it's going to be n over 6 but n is 15 so it's going to be 2 times 15 over 6 and that's multiplied by 2n so that's going to be 2 times 15 plus the 1 and then multiply by n plus 1 so it'll be 15 plus 1. And then we've got this term here so it's going to be minus the 2 and then we've got sigma of r squared r going from 1 to 7 so n will be 7. So according to the formula it's n over 6 so that's going to be multiplied by 7 over 6 and then we multiply that by 2n plus 1, so 2 times 7 plus 1, and then multiply that by n plus 1, so that would be 7 plus 1. Now, I leave that to you to work out, but if you do, say, type that into your calculator, what you should find you get is 2,200. Okay? So, hope that's given you some idea then on how we can work with the sum of r squared for these kind of examples. Now in my next video what I'm going to do is introduce you to the formula for the sum of r cubed and with that we'll do some similar kinds of examples. Well, as usual I hope you found this of some use to you and you can find further videos on my website. It's the best place to find videos rather than my YouTube channel because it's full of indexes and if you're following a particular exam you should generally find there's specifications there with links to the appropriate videos. Alright, 